Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode. And Oscar, where do you think we should start? Um, let's start with the best game of the weekend. Oh, Valencia versus Cadiz. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We don't want to kill all the fo- all our listeners. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, let's, just start. Start, let's start with Barcelona then. Okay, um, no pro- that's okay. Yeah, because that was the high-profile game of the weekend, mm-hmm. the big playoff for second place. Um, Barca, in this game, Barca played well, but it seemed like they met, Xavi met his tactical match with Lopetegui in this game. Yeah. Like the the effort and the like productivity, like the creation was there, but we ran into a brick wall for most of the day. All of our crosses were getting headed up by Sevilla because they sat back really well. Bono was excellent. But thankfully we managed to get the breakthrough. Yeah, and it, it was a brilliant goal from Pedri, wasn't it? And, and there are things that goal made me say that I, I can't say on this point. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, we don't want to get banned on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but yeah. seriously, what a goal! Uh, yeah, what, yeah. A, what a player! Since, since Pedri came back, he's taking a play to another level. Yeah, that's glad to have the guy. Like, which one is a better goal? His goal against Sevilla or his goal against Galatasaray? Uh, I think it's this one because he could only beat Bono in one place. Like, we're having that ball traveling to the side of the net. That's the only way you could have scored that goal. Against Galatasaray, while it was also difficult, and I feel like he had other options there. He could have he could have easily even decided not to shoot and pass to Bamiyang back then. But yeah, this goal, the stakes that the goal was surrounded by, I think that's what makes this one better. Yeah, because with the celebration of this goal, it's almost like if Barca had won the league or something. Yeah, it was, it was relief and enjoy. I, I felt like everyone was so happy and buzzing about the goal that no one cared if Sevilla equalized. Yeah. And I certainly didn't care anymore. I'm like, I think also it's the fact that Sevilla, I, I kind of knew they weren't going to do anything again. Yeah, but but they, did come, just, they did come close to scoring it at the end there with Augustinson. Yeah, but that was the stick and having his odd mistake. But thankfully, he recovered from it. Yeah, it's all been funny because I've been trolling Augustinson on Twitter all week. <laughs> it's all been cruel fit if he or Marcel scored today. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Marcel, like he he had a poor game today. I yeah. I felt like I felt Augustine. not not just him, but the entire forward line, yeah. even Jesus Navas, was quite poor. Mm-hmm. Ocampos was very selfish. Martial, he didn't hold the ball up well when he should have. I don't think he was aggressive enough in this game. He got bullied so, off the ball by PK, by Araujo, and you'd expect a guy who's as built as he is, who's as st- tall, stocky, fast, to have mm-hmm. done better against PK and Araujo, but he didn't do that well. Yeah. And that is that Sevilla, in the first half at least, didn't show any any. Yeah. There was they, no didn't any, like, they, 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 they didn't want to score at all. Yeah. And they only kept the ball to prevent us from having it. Yeah. And then it was just it was just poor from Lopetegui. Like, I understand the injuries and everything, but just because of the injuries, if you have to completely deviate your tactics because of an injury, I think we saw that in the classical last week. Yeah. You're going to suffer. But I don't think I don't think he deviated from tactics. I think maybe his game plan was to get a draw from this game. Yeah, okay, yeah. What you're saying is more accurate, but still, that's still a bit negative because yeah, if you look at it right, without Fernando for the rest of the season and Betis and Atleti also being in form, yeah, Sevilla could bottle top four. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's likely, but uh, it, it is. It is very likely because the. The gap is just four. If Real Sociedad wins, the gap to six will be six. And yeah. Sevilla, they still have to play Atletico away. They still have to play Real Madrid at home. They have to play Villarreal, Villarreal away. They have to play Athletic at home. Yeah. And those are four games where I could see them losing all four. So it's definitely possible for uh, them uh, to... Uh, 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 during their way through of them. Yeah, yeah. And but you know what? I, I don't think this was a terrible away performance from no, it wasn't. yeah, given how 
while Barcelona have been. I'm sure they've watched they watched El Clasico, they watched how Barca set up against Atletico and Athletic, and they were like, you know what, let's just keep things tight in the first half, not concede, and mm-hmm. open up the game a bit in the second half. And mm-hmm. the game plan almost worked, but the problem is when you're when you set up to defend, you're always you're always leaving yourself open for a moment of magic, like we saw with Pedri, and that's that's sort of what happened to them. Yeah. As in the second half, as we started to take more risks, they were actually transitioning better. So it was a situation where the longer it was nil-nil, the more you kind of said there's hope for them to nick one and shut us out. Yeah, because they, they had good chances in the second half. Those cross that Navas had. Uh, overhead. Covers. Yeah, overhead. Uh, there was the Martial chance. But I just feel in the final third, they made the wrong decisions, especially on campus. There are times when mm-hmm. I thought he should have passed it to... Rekic or Augustin yeah. or Sekretito going for the overlap, but he sh- decides to shoot. Even there was that one chance where PK um, cynically took down Rafa Mir, <laughs> which <laughs> Rafa Mir would have been during goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but, that, that was too cynical. <laughs> I was shocked. Like, yeah. really? But yeah, and, and do you know the worst part? It's like more Sevilla players got a young God's card. Books. <laughs> I think I got his yellow, right? But yeah. Sevilla, that, I think that's another issue, Sevilla. When games don't go their way, Lopetegui and the players just lose their heads and yeah. get silly bookings. Like it's, I think you just need to focus on the game and yeah. mentally be right. Yeah. But going forward, like for, and we'll talk about Sevilla a bit more in this podcast when we get to the bet section, but like going forward for Barcelona, they were all hoping for this weekend that uh, maybe Real Madrid slipped up. What's the aim now? Is it just to keep on winning and hope Real Madrid collapse? Or is is it that now we have the second place? Now it feels like fourth is going to be, or top four is going to be sewn up, job done. I, yeah, I, think, I think we have to just focus on ending the season as well as possible. Yeah. so that we can carry that momentum and good feeling into next season because if you lose a couple of games towards the end of the season, the conversation starts changing a bit, especially if certain players join certain clubs and all that. Yeah, that, that is true and it's and you, the thing is you never know, right? Because right now it seems like Barca is and they're enjoying themselves they're terrific, yeah. but a couple of results and the whole picture can change like look at what happened to Sevilla Yeah yeah, and Barca have Eintracht Frankfurt max, and they tied 0-0 with uh, Goethe Firth. Are you scared about this game? Like, how do you see this game going? You know what? And look, I- I'm normally pessimistic about every game we're going to. And I- I- I'm fairly confident. I know Frankfurt is a great atmosphere. It's going to be difficult to go there and play because of how intense the fans are. And Frankfurt, they play really quick transitions too. So it's going to be an interesting game. Hopefully we can kind of get the job done a bit away from home because at home in Europe this season, I don't know what's going on. We don't score goals in that horrible third kit. Yeah, maybe teams are just setting up like Sevilla did. <laughs> maybe that's, maybe that's the way. Teams have been... Yeah, I think that's the way. Just defend deep when you get your transitions big as quick as possible. Yeah, because Frankfurt will be quicker in the transitions than Sevilla yeah. were. Yeah, I, th- I think Frankfurt's case is their build up is too quick from what I've seen. Mm-hmm. Especially against Betis, their build up alone was quick, let alone their counter attacking. So <laughs> I feel like we, we need to kind of slow the game down a bit, like don't yeah. play it at their pace. Yeah. And in some ways, going back to the Sevilla game, I feel that's what Sevilla did that worked well for yeah, 17 they, minutes. They slowed Barca. things down. They slowed things down and they made sure that Barca weren't able to play at the pace that they played against Valencia, against Atletico, or against Real Madrid. Mm-hmm. So it was a very slow game and they did get the ball more. Mm-hmm. And let's move over to Barca's main rivals, Real Madrid, in what was the most controversial game of the weekend. Like, as we said, Barca, we we're hoping Laporta was praying for Celta Vigo <laughs> to win against Real Madrid. But again, luck had it that Real Madrid won this one. And let's let's take it, let's talk about incident by incident, right? Let's start with the first penalty. Do you have any issue with that? 
I, I don't have any issue. No need to. I, I get he wasn't trying to bring him down, but like when you rush in, you're asking for trouble. Like, yeah, it does clip Militao's legs. Yeah, it clips Militao. And when you barge in like that and you don't get the ball, that's, if the referee gives it, it's not the kind of thing that's going to make the referee go to the screen and overturn it. So, and moving on from that, there was the Aspas goal that was disallowed. What do you think? Um, yeah, um, I think that was the correct decision too, because Aspas was in Alaba's way of clearing the ball. Yeah. It's debatable whether Alaba might have gotten there, but the fact that Aspas was there kind of, you know, makes it the decision fair. Yeah, and, and what I don't get about this is almost like Aspas knew that it was offside because he didn't make an attempt to touch the ball. Mm-hmm. And I don't get why he kept on impeding Alaba because that was what led to the goal being disallowed. Yeah, you, sh- you shouldn't have moved. You should have just stood still. Yeah. And moving on, the third penalty. I'm sorry, the second penalty. Second penalty. Again, that one is the clearest penalty of all. Clearest, yeah, because... But the third one, that's where the controversy came yeah. in. And our, our friend <laughs> Gonzalo Fuertes was involved in this one. Personally, like I think I can see where it's coming from. Like there is contact, it's the slightest of contact. Mm-hmm. And you can give that as a penalty. I wouldn't give that as a penalty personally, because I feel it's a coming together. And mm-hmm. how are you expected to defend? Right? Yeah. Uh, it's it's one of those things where if that penalty was reviewed, it's not going to be given. But then I think this is one of the issues people have with VAR. Why don't certain situations get reviewed? Now, it's because of the whole, um, what do you call this thing again? Clear and obvious error yeah. thing. And also, and also, you don't re-referee games in VAR. Exactly. Which, but sometimes that happens the in other games. Yeah. Because like if the referee has a clear and obvious like slight, of a penalty and the referee thinks in his interpretation that is a penalty then it should be a penalty yeah and we all know this ref like there are some tackles that go in that like for slightest tackles it gives a foul it gives a yellow so yeah. it's not like he's changed the way you ref the games for these specific situations like you know the ref you're playing again so you have to wise enough. And I don't think Salter were wise enough in those instances. Yeah. I also noticed something. The three players that considered the penalties are players that haven't really been featuring for Celta recently. Yeah, that's I don't I I don't think that has anything to do with them considering the actual penalties, but it's just something funny I noticed. Yeah, yeah, because um I believe the first one was Nolito, who's barely yeah, no, Nolito hasn't been playing, it's been Servi. Um, yeah. Murillo, Murillo hasn't really been playing. I mean, been it's been I do or Araujo. And, and Kevin, Kevin Vasquez yeah. just came in because Mayo is out for the rest of the season. Yeah. And I feel maybe in some ways, I feel errors aside, Celta were brilliant in that game. Yes, the Celta were very good. Honestly, they deserved more than what they got. They deserved yeah. at least, at the very least, a draw. But... A draw, yeah. But how good is Scotswater, man? Yeah, is the demon. I hate he was him. a giant. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. this. This guy is something else. <laughs> like Bono is was brilliant today, but it was like a poor thing compared to how good Corto has been. Yeah. Yes, like yesterday. Who Who do you think is the better goalkeeper between Bono and Corto? Because Bono like, Bo- easily Corto. It's Corto. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not say easily because Bono is excellent. So it's just that I guess I'm putting popularity bias a bit into Bono not being a name where everyone in Europe knows him, sadly. Sure. But hopefully, I hope Bono wins his Amora because he deserves it. <laughs> yeah, you never know because he, he can still bottle it like Sevilla. Yeah. But... <laughs> I mean, the, the thing, just to go back on Sevilla, in terms of conceding goals, they won't, I don't think they'll concede bucket loads of goals between now and the end of the season. It's just they can't score right now. So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and I think El Clasico sort of killed Kotswa's chances of retaining it. Yeah, um, that, 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 that was a bad day for like... <laughs> I think Kotswa was pretty far, far though. I think it was, yeah. it was Bono just by himself yeah. for the most part. 
Yeah, because Bono still, I think he's only considered 14 goals himself, and he still has time. Like, he, he just needs to play four more games to win it. Like, yeah, Bono is far, Bono is definitely winning this. Yes, yeah. Everyone else has <laughs> like eight points three more than him. So. Yeah. Yeah. And with Real Madrid, they have they're in action this weekend. Uh, I'm sorry, this week against Chelsea. They didn't look too good, but neither did Chelsea when they lost 4 1 to Brentford. Who do you think yeah. is the stronger side going into this tie? Yeah, I've always fancied, since the draw came out, I've always fancied Real Madrid because I feel Real Madrid's players are more consistent than Chelsea's because with Chelsea, you have a lot of good players, but like they kind of have their periods where they shine. Like yeah. someone will shine for a month and then next month is someone else. So yeah, I think the fact that Real Madrid have more consistent players and the fact they have Benzema, Soa, Vinicius, Players that are just cheats goods, they'll win. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, if you watch Real Madrid against Salta, against Barcelona, they don't completely inspire your confidence. Even for half for half of the game against Mallorca. Yeah, true, been... but they still won yesterday, didn't they? They always find their way. Yeah. <laughs> so... uh, but I, I don't think Charles, I don't think Rudiger would be as silly as Kevin Vasquez, right? True. True, that's true, but I, I still Benzema is another. I, I hate to say it, but this guy should win the Ballon d'Or this year. <laughs> what do you yeah. think needs to happen from last year when Chelsea were so dominant in Stamford Bridge? Yeah, true. I think that this is something we need to talk about. Real Madrid need to first of all select players that won 100%. Mm. That's the mistake Zizou made. Yeah. Second of all, I think Valverde needs to play in this game. Whether you Bring him on, win for Rodrigo or for Chris or Modric. He needs to play. Yeah, he needs to have. Chris. Yeah, because I feel in these sort of games, Tony Cross doesn't have, and this will be controversial. I don't think he has the legs for these sort of games. Like maybe in com- the- com- yeah, compared to someone like Kanti, he doesn't yeah. have the legs. But yeah, Cruz still works hard, and I, I feel just. I think. Having Chris Modric and Casemiro is a must. Either yeah. way, yeah, look at it. But the right winger at Real Madrid is usually someone that is not irreplaceable. So you could put Valverde there. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I think that that could work as well. And what about Gareth Bale? Like he's scoring goals for Wales. Like I was, <laughs> and now he's back on the bench. <laughs> that, that, right? April Fools was two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, I don't know. Yeah. Bale doesn't look like. He wants to even play because I'm sure he's saving his legs for June because we'll have to play the Scotland or Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one player who's like on fire right now is Joe Felix. He scored a brace for Atletico and he said in the world of light. What, what's changed so far? I think it's the fact that he's getting, Chola has fully put his faith in him now and he's delivering. Yeah. It's like, the quality has always been there. It's just about consistency. And it is really taking his like performance and the team's performance to another. Yeah, when he scored that, bullet, that header, I was like, is this Joe Felix? Yeah, like yeah. he's very good at headed goals. But he's barely scored it, them in La Liga. That's that's why I was, I was so surprised. I was like, this seems like Falcao. Or a yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Thank you. He feels like with his build, he feels like a mini Falcao or Aguero. Yeah. Something like that. He's not as prolific as either, but if he is, then then watch out everyone. Yeah. And Suarez who got on the score sheet. So it yeah. seems like things are going well. Even Mateus Cunha, like he yeah. should have scored, but like he came on and he he changed the game. Yeah, he, Cunha Cunha has been really good since he joined Atleti. I remember when we were like, he and Korea have to start because yeah. there were the people providing energy in attack. So, yeah, Atleti look good. Like, they have a lot of options in attack now to hurt different opposition, depending on how the game is. But I feel like Felix is a constant now. Yeah. Like, he has to play every game. And he, I would have said the same. It. Yeah. Like, like, uh, also, go on. I would have said the same thing about Korea too, but because of circumstances, he's been out of the team. Yeah. So. 
And it's like, I remember it's here, I remember you saying one quote, like, you have to make yourself, if you're a young player or you're trying to get into the team, you have to make yourself undroppable. That's true. And that's something that Felix has done. Vinicius did so this season. Mm-hmm. Pedri did it when he came to Barcelona. And that's something that's something that I always question about John Felix because it always seemed like he felt, I deserve to be on this team. I should mm-hmm. be playing without scoring, with giving the ball away, with not showing enough, like, commitment to this team to the team that's part of but now it feels like he's part of the team he's playing for the team and he feel it's like imbibe the old athletic ethos pretty much yeah and true he's now like playing to he played to earn his sand yeah it's yeah. like everyone is doing everyone is generally doing well but it's not just felix because koke is back yeah. playing well Hector Herrera is man. playing well yeah yeah, and a special note on this game, like there was a huge moment of silence for Diego Simeone. He obviously lost his father, and that was that was very touching. And just to see the way he reacted, it shows how much love there is between him and the club and the club and him. Yeah, it's a big Atleti is family basically. So a loss for Chula is basically a big loss for Atleti fans. Atleti and, and people who love Chula. Yeah. How do you see them? playing against Manchester City because mm. they're going to have to face a different beast that they've faced all season. Yeah. Um, they, can, they can win this tie over two legs. There's no doubt about it, but it's going to be really difficult, like you said. Concentration is going to have to be at its highest because City, the way they move the ball, they just log you into losing concentration sometimes. Yeah. And to be honest, Atleti's last two home games have kind of been a bit strange because against Cadiz, they didn't really perform all that well. And for a large period of this game yesterday, I thought our best by chance were just creating a little bit of danger because Atleti were a bit sloppy. No, so, I, I, I agree. Like it, they were very lazy and, or yeah, sloppy is a, must be a better word between that period where they scored the first goal and they scored the second. It was yeah. all Alaves. Yeah. But I, mean, I also before, wonder whether it's conditioned by the fact that they have a champion, big Champions League game. Yeah, out. true. That, that, that could be a team. And the, having the Champions League game and also just um, coming back from an international break, it's not always easy to pick up a level again. Yeah. Also, the fact that I think they just knew Alaves and could probably won't score anyway. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they, Alaves <laughs> did, but generally, man, the best team don't look like yeah, it's yeah. in the target, let alone scoring. Yeah, as a coachman, Duleba has been really struggling in, over the last few years. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, let, let's move on to the other Champions League team, Villarreal. My God, they're like Sevilla away from home. <laughs> <laughs> watching this game and seeing the notifications and life scores about Bayern <laughs> destroying Freiburg. <laughs> I'm, I'm really scared for Villarreal. It, it makes one worry, it's true, because, <laughs> I mean, um, I'm not this. I love M- 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 Morales and Roger Marti, but yeah, Lewandowski is a totally different <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, Honestly, I don't think Villarreal were bad in this game. It's just that Levante, they really stepped up to the occasion. You know, it's a local, it's a derby at home. You need the points because you're in a relegation race and they really stepped up. And Morales was like prime Maradona, man. His second prime goal. Prime Maradona, prime R9, prime Messi, all of them put together. That second goal, I was amazed by it, man. And like, he, 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 he really didn't deserve to be done like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like, when, when, you see this, when you see the goal on replay, man. Yeah, the slow-mo of when it's like, oh, you're seeing God. Morales is back. It's just like, really was trying desperately not to, not to fall on himself. But, you know, he just couldn't. Yeah. And the problem for Villarreal now is that Valencia are four points back from them. Athletic are one point back from them. There's a chance that they might even finish in the top seven, let alone finish in the Europa League. Yeah. But like um, a few weeks ago, Villarreal were like really close to Barca. They were close to Sevilla. And, not Sevilla, but they were close to Atleti too. But then these three away losses in the row have really damaged them. 
because and especially because they lost to Osasuna, lost to Cardiff and Levante. Yeah. The latter two are the ones that will really be like, you should be winning this. Yeah. The yeah. only other time they've lost this year was also away from home against Elche, another team that you should beat if you want to finish top four. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's it's very it's very very strange especially when they can give a such a strong performance away to Juventus but maybe under the Champions League lights the players this could have be their different. makeup on it will be different they'll, they'll surprise us against Bayern but frankly <laughs> I, I, I don't have too much hope for them in this game yeah. or in this time I, I mean if, if Landowski has been having a rip problem if for some reason he's he and Neuer are not playing and they have a very good chance, but yeah, yeah it's. I mean, to be fair to Villarreal, it's been, it's been an amazing tournament from them. Yeah. A club this size being the Champions League, pushing for top four all in the same time is incredible. So, whatever they do, those guys are legends to their team. Yeah, that, that is true. That is true. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Going out against Bayern will be more respectable than going out against Benfica. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I mean, no, going I, out I, to Bayern, there, there's, no, there's no shame in that. It's just shame. about how you do it. Yeah. Don't but, be like us and give yeah. up when it's 5 2. No, no. Like Arsenal, too. Like, like I think it was like 5 1, one leg. Yeah. Five, and Bayern one. stopped scoring because they felt sorry for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But one team that's on the scoring streak is Real Betis. And, well, what can we say about this team that we haven't already said? Without uh, Canales, without Fekir, they were still brilliant. Yeah, it was brilliant from um, Juan Miguel. Yeah. I think <laughs> oh, he's back scoring goals. <laughs> oh, Juan Miguel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Alex Marino also has been excellent this season. Oh, yeah. He... Last season, he was out of the team because defensive issues were per game, but then defensively he's been good. He's now added to his attacking. You know, he's the top scoring defender in the league. Yeah, he's Set like up. a mini Roberto Carlos, man. Exactly. <laughs> he's really, honestly, if he keeps this up, maybe Lucha should have a look at him for the World yeah. Cup if maybe Gaia or Alba don't make it. Don't make it. Yeah, because I saw I saw in papers on the last couple of days that Barca might be interested in him. It was like, you know what? Like, this guy, he, ha- he has the quality, right? He's yeah. very good. He's, like, quick. I still think defensively he can be suspect, but... Yeah, defensively, he still has one or two issues, but it's not as bad as he used to be. Yeah. Which, who scored the better goal between him and William and William Cavallo? Yeah. I think I have to say it's him because of the nutmeg. The nutmeg, the nutmeg factor. I, I, I don't know. So one of them rounded the goalkeeper. The other yeah, one yeah, Cavalio was Cavalli rounded goalkeeper. I was like, wow. Yeah, Cavalio, also, he's been brilliant this season. And yeah. some of the goals he has scored have been... They'd make Ronaldo Nazario jealous on this. <laughs> yeah, they had, like, the one he scored against Rayo was... Yeah, in the cup. The top. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, And the one yeah. Miguel, man. Juan yeah. Miguel, two goals to assist. Yeah. He hadn't scored in 10, 10 games. Yeah. Yeah, he'd been out. I mean, I think with COVID and just being out of the team for a while, Betis also suffered. So it's good to see him back amongst the goals. He's the top scoring Spanish player in the league. So maybe he'll win the Zamora. Yeah. RDT might say, have something to say about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he might. Uh, and let's move, let's move over to Athletic LK. Brilliant goals here too. The first goal was really special from Berenguer. Yeah. Elche, uh, Athletic, they, they increased their lead, but late mm-hmm. on, Elche almost caused a scare. <laughs> and yeah. with, with Athletic, do you see them finish in seven? Do you think they have the chance, like given how Villarreal has struggled? Next week is going to be Villarreal Athletic, and I think that's going to be a bonkers game. But what do you think about their chances for top seven? If they beat VRL next week, it's, it's in their hands because they, they'll, they'll have the superior head to head. Because remember, they beat them 2 1 at La Ceramica earlier in this No, 2 1 at Sama Mez earlier in the season. Yeah. So, yeah, if VRL don't get their act together away from home soon, they could drop out of top seven, like you said. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, Let's take a chance. Yeah, I think so. Um, 
we were meant to go over to Valencia Cadiz, but like, yeah, let's just skip the, this one. <laughs> let's go to the more I, interesting I, I mean, game. We can talk out Brian Hill's injury. Is this serious? Yeah. So, I think I saw he like had a hip injury, but I don't know about Yeah, this. I think with all those things, like we would have to wait to see. But let's hope it's nothing that serious because he's been having a fun time. Yeah. I think Mama Dash Philly was the standout in this game. Yeah. I, I saw so I saw yeah, I saw a stat that all right, that really hasn't considered in over 470 league minutes. Wow, that's that's really impressive. I, I was shocked and like have Valencia been drawing new new that much. <laughs> <laughs> That, no, it's true. It's true because the only game Valencia have conceded, and it's not him that has been playing. He's been dominant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like he, he's a fine goalkeeper. And to be yeah. fair, Valencia they they have improved, but those the zeros are against Atafe <laughs> that happened, which was a terrible game. This one as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it wasn't as good. But during that time, those Granada, Rayo, Vallecano, and I. Couldn't watch LJ too. I'm so, yeah. Oh, Granada Rayo Vallecano for the next game. Yeah. Now, now I was saying that Valencia also played against Elche. Yeah, yeah. They played against Elche. They played against Elche. But like moving on to Granada Rayo, and yeah. I couldn't watch this one, but yeah. from just by what by seeing the reaction, it looked like it was a bonkers game. Rayo took the lead and it was two zero, and I was surprised at at the end of the Valencia game when my commentary was like. Well, it's me, I just equalized, and I was like, how did Ryo let this yeah. go? Yeah, I actually watched this game. I, it was this and Valencia Cadiz, and it was an easy choice to make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ryo started really well. I was like, wow, they're finally going to win a game at home. It, it, they're finally going to win a game period in 2022 until Santi Comesania got two yellow cards in two minutes. I mean, one of the yellows felt a bit soft, honestly. But so, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Hernandez and Hernandez <laughs> will have to answer to Rayo fans for that. Yeah. And yeah, Granada made a great effort to come back. Molina hit the post twice. He could have had a hat trick, but he still got a goal. Actually, he hit the post three times. His goal went in off the post. <laughs> and then, yeah, um, the penalty that Milia equalized from was controversial because from certain angles, the ball didn't seem to hit Mario Suarez on the hand. Yeah. And Mario Suarez even posted the video on Twitter and was like, seriously, you're giving a penalty against me for this? Yeah, yeah. lots yeah, of controversy. Seems like the refs in La Liga are really struggling with the criteria for penalties or for handballs leading to penalties this season. Yeah, and then... The referee in La Liga needs to be overhauled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not good. I personally think foreign refs need to be in the bar booth. <laughs> I think that would take away any bias or any suspicions of bias there. But it will take a lot of things to implement that. But if that could improve the overall and um, quality of football across all the leagues, I, I, I'm open to it. Yeah, because I feel the the issue is like if you're in a you're a referee from a certain league or a certain country, you obviously have your own biases towards like mm-hmm. certain teams and you go by repetition because for example, I think Atletico get a lot of yellow cards by repetition, not by actual fouls. Sure. Sure. I feel Barca and Madrid, the bigger clubs in general, maybe I can put Atletico there. When you're playing against a smaller side, they get the little decisions go their way by repetition. I so guess so. It'll be interesting if a foreign ref comes into the league and I don't think referees should be a protected class like players aren't a protected class managers aren't a protected class broadcasters aren't a protected class so why should the referees be protected fans tend to really go in on them yeah and it, it's fun did you hear about the controversy with Mateo Lajos I watched that game well I think we'll talk about that next yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's let, let's talk about it. Four yellow cards in one go. What a legend, man! He's he's incredible. Yeah, after the first half of Etafe versus America was not for the <laughs> not people for the that want, it's not it's not for people that want to wake up early in the morning and have see nice things. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not it was bad like. Valencia versus Cadiz was just that it was so combative that it was like a wrestling match at some point. 
Yeah. But you know what? In those kind of games, I feel Mateo Lajos is, is the best referee for that. Yeah, he's the best referee for them because he just, with, with like showing that many players yellow cards in one moment, I like, cannot stand here for any nonsense. Yeah. And poor old Frank Russo got a second. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I felt sorry for Russo because I don't, I, that was not a penalty to me. And even if it's a penalty too, it's not a second yellow card either. So yeah, Russo's bad streak continues because in his last <laughs> appearance, he considered the penalty, scored an own goal and got sent off. <laughs> Oh, man. And, yeah, and that penalty you considered against Real Madrid was scandalous. He just, like, pushed Vinicius out of nowhere. And I'm like, what's going, to, what's going on in this player's mind? Yeah. yeah. But in this game, uh, Meyer all scored. He dedicated his goal to Jaime Mata. Mm-hmm. Uh, but with Mateo Lajos, there was audio that came out that where he told NSU now, you owe me one. Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> oh my God, Lajos. He, he, he's like, like, I don't know. This week, yeah, it's just been ref, referee central. I remember the one time he's like, PK, how are the kids? <laughs> i like, really? Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he's that, it, yeah. It was a good, like the first time Hetafe decided to be quick and incisive on the ball, they broke through Mallorca, even yeah. though it was 10 men Mallorca. Yeah, it's it's difficult for Mallorca because they have Atletico next and all of their centre-backs might not be available for that game. Yeah, Russo is suspended. Sedler, Rayo, and Valhent all injured. They basically play the back three with Idris Ubaba and Olivan. One of them is a full-back. The other one is a midfielder. So, yeah, Javier Aguirre has a lot of work to do if Mallorca are going to stay up. Yeah, he does. I mean, he's like the big Sam of La Liga, so yeah. <laughs> no, no, But let's talk about the relegation picture for a brief moment. It mm-hmm. seems like right now, Levante, they have a small chance of making it out. They're six points behind Cadiz. Mallorca are in the relegation zone right now, but they're three points behind Granada, two points behind Cadiz. Who do you think makes it out in the final analysis? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to see the head-to-head between Cadiz and Levante. Yeah, Cadiz have the superior head-to-head over Levante, so technically it's seven points. Yeah. That they need to finish a point above them. I don't know. Alaves have the easiest matches, but they don't have the quality to win most of them. Mallorca have a serious injury crisis, plus difficult fixtures. They still have to play Atleti and us and they, I don't think they have that many six pointers left because they lost a lot of them to Cad. They lost a few of them. Like to, they lost to Levante, for instance. So that could affect them. I think Cadiz will stay up out of all mm. of them. Levante, Levante may finish 18th at best. I think <laughs> they've, the damage has been too much. We never know. Levante, they still, I believe they still have Real Madrid and Barcelona left. So that, they, that, they that, should six, I mean, that should be six easy points. Yeah, Real Madrid, I mean, Barcelona, yeah, City, yeah. Uh, nine points. <laughs> Honestly, my brother and I right, were talking about Levante and he's like, going to Levante away in the last part of the season is a dangerous thing. Because <laughs> those guys will play, will like, play like they're on steroids. On steroids, yeah. yeah so, now I mean, that they really need it. Tomorrow, like next Sunday, they could just slap four pastors. <laughs> it's <be> like, <laughs> what happened? Yeah. Yeah, it, it could be. <laughs> but moving over to Italy, that was where the big game of it's the big game of the weekend in Europe outside of Spain was. And mm-hmm. Inter, they got that big win against Juventus. And it looked like Juventus were dominating this game, but Inter get the penalty. They hold on. Crash the soft for Inter. Uh, yeah, it's a big win to solve their slump. And it puts the and it effectively rules you out of the title race for now. Yeah, I guess, I guess my predictions were way off in that one. <laughs> I, I'm, it, you never know with Syria. In the last seven games, if complete madness can happen and you can still win it. But I think out of all of them, Milan are best place. The best place. 
Yeah. It, they, they did play this weekend, but Napoli played and they played against Atalanta and Napoli beat them. And what's happened to Atalanta? Because it looks like at this stage, they might not even qualify for Europe. Yeah, Roma and Lazio have jumped ahead of them in recent weeks. Um, I think if Fiorentina win the Coppa, the, the, I said Coppa, <laughs> Coppa Italia, Coppa Italia <laughs> first of all, if, if Fiorentina win the Coppa Italia, they'll get the Europa League spot. Then that means sixth place will get Conference League and seventh place gets nothing. So I, I, don't, know. I don't really know what's wrong with Atlanta. In the Europa League, they've been good. In the UCL, they were good, so they just had a difficult group. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. If they win the Europa League, do they get top four? So top four. The league position might not even matter. Yeah, it, it, it's, yeah, the league position shouldn't matter, but yeah, it's, it's just weird to see them because they've been flying the flag for Italy for so long, yeah. and now it seems like all of a sudden things are just collapsing for them. And Atalanta, their next opponents are Leipzig, and my God, they had an eye-catching results against Dortmund. Uh, uh, it was complete and utter devastation. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that in a robotic voice, like I heard in a cartoon one time, but I don't embarrass myself. <laughs> uh, Leipzig were amazing against Dortmund, and Dortmund were. It was amateur stuff at times, especially for that fourth goal that Daniel almost scored. Yeah. He had, he had the whole parking lot to himself. <laughs> like, man, Nkunku was great. Um, current Lima was excellent. It's going to be difficult for Atlanta to contain Leipzig. But seeing how both sides play, if I think if we don't see at least four goals over two legs, it's disappointing. Yeah, yeah, especially given Atlanta Levick is an ad. At least yeah. four. Had five in one game. Yeah, yeah. And has have we been underrating Leipzig because they seem like a sleeper in this Europa League? We haven't really spoken of them as one of the favorites. We've spoken about Leverkusen, Barca, Atalanta, but here we see them getting great results. Yeah, if they beat Atalanta, their opponents are going to be either Braga or Rangers, and that's more winnable for them. Yeah. Yeah, Leipzig in the Champions League, I think they got knocked out just because they got a very tough group too. Yeah. Because they had both Manchester City and PSG to face. And honestly, when they played against PSG, I thought they were better over in both games. It's just that PSG have better players. Yes, that's true. And with Dortmund, why do they keep on letting us down? At first, we thought they were going to close the gap to four points. And now it's back to nine. What's gone wrong for them? I don't know, like, but, the season but there's a song. There. There's a song called Build Me Up Buttercup. That's <laughs> the perfect way to describe Dortmund. Why do you build me up just to let me down? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I, I really what? fear for them when they go to the Allianz Arena. I really do. When is that? Let me see. Uh, that's going to be in... It's, it's quite a while away, okay. Ending of April. Yeah. <laughs> there might not even be a title race by then. <laughs> uh, that's going to be a spectacle. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and I, I don't know what's wrong with them. They have good players, so it's not like the players are bad. Or anything. They just feel distracted. Like, everyone is just beating them up. Rangers destroyed yeah. them. Leverkusen destroyed them. It's, it's like teams that you wouldn't expect are just like thrashing them. I, I you, 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 I'd say Leverkusen and Leipzig could beat Dortmund, but not like this bad. <laughs> Especially when Dortmund they have almost everyone fit now, so it's not like they don't have the, we don't have Haaland team. True. Now, what Haaland I think is is mentally not to be there. Yeah. Where do you think you'll go, by the way? Like, if you, if you, if I give you $100 to bet, where you bet? Manchester um, City? Real Manchester Madrid, City. Manchester City? Yeah, I don't think you'll go to Real Madrid based on the fact that it's, it doesn't make sense to have Benzema, Haaland, and Mbappe at the same time. Plus Vinicius. You never know what Florentino Paris. They could play 4-4-2. Sure. 
True. I forgot this. <laughs> Vinicius, I forgot on, Vinicius on the left. Uh, Mbappe on the right. No, he, you know, Mbappe is the bigger player. We'll put True. Mbappe, oh, on, Mbappe the on the left. Mbappe right, on the right. Vinicius, <laughs> Vinicius the on the right. right. Benzema and Haaland as, as the fourth. I mean, he, he, he did that in 2001 and two, so yeah. it's, not, it's not unlikely he'll do it. And just if Carlo doesn't like it, then Carlo can say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. The final... He'll just get, he'll yeah. just get Joaquin Lu <laughs> and say <do> what he <laughs> wants. <laughs> Oh, that'll, that'll be fun to watch. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so Liverpool, Benfica, that's the final Champions League fixture we haven't spoken about. How do you see that going? Benfica, they lost to Braga 3-2. <laughs> Liverpool, they won at home against Watford. Mm. Any, any prayer for Benfica or is this just going to be like a walk in the park? I hope Benfica can make it a comp- make it have. I hope that this tie still has intrigue going to second leg. I hope it's not like when Liverpool always play Porto and the tie is <laughs> over in twenty minutes. Because yeah. Liverpool, Liverpool seem to get a lot of Portuguese draws in every yeah. ACL season. Yeah, they, they always get Porto. And the funny thing is, get- of the three Portuguese teams, Benfica is the weakest, and they've gone yeah. the furthest. So. <laughs> I do fear for them, but the first leg is good. Because when you look at it, Liverpool have a lot of pace in attack and on the bench. Yeah. And Benfica's starting centre-backs are both Otamendi and Vertonghen, who <laughs> don't have the best recovery pace. Yeah. It could be terrible for Benfica, but at the same time, one has to hope that they can do themselves proud in this game. In this game, yeah. And they're in the same boat as Villarreal. Just, it's no shame to go out against a very difficult team. Just don't go out in a bad way. True. And with Liverpool, they have, after this game, they have Manchester City coming up. In the FA Cup, right? Yeah. I, I believe it's either in the league or in the FA Cup. It's like they have... The Both in the, I think it's in the league first. Yeah, in the league first, yeah. And that, that, that seems like it might be a title decider for the Premier League. So who, who will you go for in that game? I'm going to go for the madman Pep to get yeah. the job done. He's going to <laughs> probably invent a new tactic. Never <laughs> yeah. He's probably going to play Laporte as the false nine. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I, I think the fact that City are at home favors them. So, yeah, I think City will win. Yeah. Mm. And moving on to another oil rich club, Pese Hey. They they won five one comfortable results. Even your boy Messi scored. That is surprising. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I saw this thing where BR football posted Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe have scored at the same in the same game for the first time. Wow. And my first reaction was like, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> at this point, who really cares? Yeah, true. It's like the season's over for them. But Sergio Ramos out of nowhere came. He appeared. He did. <laughs> Yeah, he did. He did in this game for 18 minutes. <laughs> uh, I mean, good, good for him. Good for, like, that has been a, such a disastrous transfer for, for PSG. Mm-hmm. Ramos clearly wasn't fit when he came there, so it was just like a big risk taking it. And in already injured player on huge ridges. Yeah, because last season, Ramos was injured for most of the season. That, and that's how Militao came up. So, yeah. Yeah. honestly, I feel Real Madrid got better part of the bargain because they got Alaba a fit defender who can do more or less most of what Ramos does yeah. and they got rid of Ramos because this season if imagine if they didn't sign Alaba and Ramos Militao well, well, and Nacho was there most of the time it would have been Militao and Nacho has sent the yeah, center back there yeah so I mean they won't have been as good because Alaba brings a lot of quality in on the ball like he also initiates the attacks yeah Nacho can't really do that Ramos should have been injured and absent. So, yeah, Real Madrid ultimately made the right decision to not renew Ramos. Ramos, yeah. I mean, from a neutral point of view, it's going to be his last window for a World Cup. So hopefully he can get his act together and join La Roja. (laughs) Yeah, on on the World Cup, though, like, what groups are you looking for? Obviously, Nigeria couldn't make it, so we had to support other countries. So what group are you most interested in? 
I'm most interested in Spain's group because mm-hmm. I like Spain. I also like Japan too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah I, it's going to be difficult for Japan, but yeah. I just remembered Kubo plays for Japan. Japan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sp- the, fact, the, the, the fact that what's his name and this Frankfurt player yeah. Yeah. I'm not forgetting his name now. Kamada I, lo- I, lo- I like Kamada a lot so. yeah. that's the reason that's one of the reasons why I went and I was rooting for Japan yeah all these 1930 fascist countries all in the same group <laughs> Spain <Germany. laughs> and then <laughs> in, in the jokes I've seen about England and you, you are saying yes, the same Iran. group. <laughs> and Iran too. Iran are in their group. Oh. <laughs> yeah, World War Three group, bro. Yeah. And besides Spain's group, another interesting group is um, the Portugal, Ghana, and then oh, man. Uruguay group. Luis Suarez versus Gra- Ghana again. Ghana again. Yeah, again. Man. You also have um, this thing. Group A is also kind of interesting because you have Netherlands, you have Senegal who are on the highest of highs. Yeah. I, I think I, I'm honestly thinking Senegal can finish first in that group. Oh yeah, for sure, without a doubt. I think they they have a good chance of making it to the quarterfinals. Yeah, they have to place the winner from the the, the winner or second place from group B, whether it's England or USA or Iran or yeah. But it, some, if they get the US, also, or we, or I, also I hope Wales can make it. To the oh yeah, World Cup. <laughs> so, so I'll be. Stop suffering Bill has been through is worth something. Yeah, imagine Phil wins the golden boots and rubs it in Marcus's face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think finally there's also Canada who's in the World Cup for the first time in 40 yeah. years. Yeah, they, and, and they're in Belgium, Morocco, Croatia, yeah. and Morocco. Yeah, Bono gets play against Canada. He was born in Canada, he was born in Montreal. Yeah. So that that that'll be special. And your boy, Messi, Argentina. Messi versus Sloan. I mean, the thing about Messi is that, see, I think it, I'm not really rooting for Argentina that much because he already won an international trophy and I want my boys in Spain to make their mark on football. Yeah. But if it comes down to it, obviously, I'd want Messi to win the World Cup. Yeah. yeah. He, he has Mexico and Saudi Arabia and Poland in their group. So Messi versus Messi, Messi versus Sloan. This. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> but on the revenge, revenge question yeah. mark <laughs> yeah it's funny because I, I, I have a couple of Argentinian friends right and they're like okay the last time Argentina won the World Cup Canada qualified mm-hmm. Nigeria was in there so it's like yeah, but, well, at the same, uh, but at the same time last time Spain won the World Cup they played against they had to play against Germany England had to play against USA <laughs> you're going, you're going to play Ghana. against Ghana. Obviously, they were in different stages. But yeah. Also, I also saw the annoying people that keep saying the certain chance, but it never happens. Say that the last time they played a game on the opening day of the World Cup, they won it. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, all, all these things are just superstitious at the end of it. Yeah. Yes. Well, but, I just, I just know it's not going to go home or whatever. <laughs> sure. Hope we hope not. And with that, it's been fascinating having you again, Oscar. Good conversation. Nice to and be here too. Let's hope for the best for our Spanish boys in Europe this week. Yeah, I mean, Villarreal. I think I need to do special prayers for them. Yeah, man. We the need other two, the other African, African witchcraft named Juju. <laughs> the other two that I'm, I'm fairly confident in, I think with Atleti and Man City, Pep might just lose the game for Man City with some boneheaded tactic. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, also, the fact that Man City don't really have a nine, and I feel like the lack of a number nine is crucial in some European games where Atleti are going to be tight at the back, right. for instance. Yeah, that's true. Anyways, adios, guys. Take care, guys.